نحمده و نسلی علی رسوله الكریم اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب شرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری و احل العقدتم من لسانی یفقه قولی و جعل لی وزیر من احلی اللہم فکہنا پی الدین رب زدنی علما اللہم انی اسألکا علما نافیا رزقا طویبا و عملا متقبلا اللہم ارنا الحق حقا و رسکنا اتباعا اللہم ارنا الباطل باطلا و رسکنا اجتنابا آمین سم آمین السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہو سورت النساء ورس سکسٹی سکس اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی سیس وَلَوْ أَنَّا قَتَبْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ أَنْ اِقْتُلُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ And if we had decreed upon them kill yourselves or leave your homes they would not have done it except for a few of them but if they had done what they were instructed to it would have been better for them and a firmer position for them in faith verse 67 and then we would have given them from us a great reward ajran azima verse 68 allah promises wala hadaina hum siratam mustaqima and we would have guided them to a straight path in verse number 66 67 and 68 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised that the person or the people who do what they are instructed. Instructed where? Instructed by Allah and his messenger. Instructed in Quran, in Hadith and Sunnah. So people who do or who act as they were ordered and instructed in Quran, Hadith and Sunnah, Allah says it would be better for them. And then Allah mentioning that this, this behavior of doing what instructions of Quran, Hadith and Sunnah are, it is better for them. Allah mentions three ways in which it is going to be better for the followers or for the, obey, or for the people who are obedient. The first thing is that Allah says they will have a firmer faith. The second is they will be guided to the straight path, the path to Jannah, the road to Jannah. Allahumma ihdina sirat al-mustaqeem. And the third is great reward, ajran azweema. Verse number 69, Allah says, وَمَنْ يُطِي اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ عَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّقِينَ وَالشُّعْدَاءَ وَالصَّالِحِينَ وَحَسُنَ عُلَٰئِكَ رَفِيكَ And whoever obeys. Now in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is actually telling about the ajran azimah that what will be the ajran azimah that whoever obeys Allah and the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam those will be those will be with the ones upon whom Allah has bestowed his favor of the prophets the steadfast affirmers of truth the martyrs and the righteous and excellent are those as companions so in verse number 69, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned the reward of the people who are going to be obedient to Allah and his messenger. The great reward, the ajran azima will be that they, all these people who are obedient to Allah and his messenger will be in the excellent company of the prophets of the truthful and the trustworthy, of the martyrs and of the righteous people in Jannah. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. O oh Allah, make us one of them. Allahumma inni as'aluka al-jannatul firdaus. So these are, is the promise of Ajran Azima. The companions 
of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam were desirous were desirous of the company of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam here and hereafter and that is why they not only acknowledged and believed in the prophethood of Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they intensely loved him and they respected and regarded him from the soul and from the core of their heart and not only that they obeyed him they obeyed the teachings of hadith and the mannerism of sunna they adopted in total submission in total submission did they obey the teachings of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and there's so many there so many happenings which have been narrated in the in the lives of the companions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam showing and exhibiting and demonstrating the love and the obedience they used to exhibit and demonstrate in their lives one day a companion was waiting outside the mosque for prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to come out and he was standing and when prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam came out he asked him that when will be the day of resurrection and when will be the doomsday or the day of qayama prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam smiled and then he said it looks as if you've made a lot of complete preparation for the day and he said i don't claim that i have made an elaborate preparation for the day of resurrection but there's one claim that i can clearly make is that i love allah and his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said then you shall be with those whom you love in jannah you will be with those whom you love another companion came over to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and asked that there is only an issue which just keeps on disturbing me and the first issue is that i don't know whether i will be i will be able to enter jannah or not but what disturbs me is that even if i get if i get in jannah and if i enter in jannah then you will be in one of the highest ranks of jannah and here in this world when i miss you i come running i see you and i refresh my soul and i cool my eyes and i get contentment of my soul but what will i do there prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam promised him look you shall be with those whom you love allahumma ja'alna minhum another companion lost his sight in a battle and his friends and his relatives came over to um, to console him and to sympathize with him and he said oh my brothers i have no regret to have lost my sight you know i have seen i have seen a lot of this world i have seen the beauties and the colors and everything of the life the only thing which makes me upset is that i will no longer be able to see prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the coolness of my eyes i will be i will be deprived of the sight of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam this was the love of the companions for the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and then there is a, a very interesting narration of hazrat usaid bin khuzair radhiyallahu ta'ala and who in bukhari he says that there were two things which i loved the most the two things which i loved the most was the two sources of guidance for me the sources of guidance towards the road or towards the path of jannah these two were prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the book of allah and out of sheer love of two what he did and how he behaved he narrates himself he says <coughs> that i loved the book of allah so much that i used to keep on reciting it wherever i was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had gifted him uh, with a very melodious voice and to be grateful of this gift of Allah he used to do what that wherever he used to be sitting he used to keep on reciting the verses of the Quran loudly and then he explains his experience in Bukhari that one night he was sitting in his courtyard under the sky of uh, at the night and he said that I recited I was reciting surah al-baqarah in the love of Quran I was loudly reciting the su- verses of surah al-baqarah 
and he said that I realized that my horse would start jumping when I used to start reciting. And then when I stopped to look at him, he would stop jumping. And then again, when I used to start or resume my recitation of Surah Al-Baqarah, he would again start jumping. He said that the horse was tied and it was very close to the place where my son was sleeping. And I feared that he might just step over my son. So I got up and I thought of uh, tying him away, slightly away. And in the meantime, he said that I got a glimpse of the sky. And there I saw that in the sky, I saw that there was a brilliant, a brilliant, shiny and a beautiful cloud overhead. And there were beautiful lamps or chandeliers hanging from the cloud. And then as I was looking at it, it started rising higher and higher and then it ultimately disappeared. And Hazrat Usaid bin Khudair who said that when I came to meet the Prophet in the morning, I narrated the whole event. And then the Prophet said, Usaid, do you know what was this all? He said, Usaid, these were the angels these were the angels of the heaven who were descending, who were descending to listen to your recitation. And if you had continued reciting the verses of the Quran, they would have landed on the earth and even we would have seen them. So this was the love of the companions for the Prophet And then Hazrat Usaid bin Khudair radiallahu ta'ala and who says that I also intensely loved the Prophet sallallahu <coughs> I intensely loved the Prophet sallallahu and because of this love he said that I had an intense desire of kissing the body of my beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So now he says that one day I was sitting in a gathering and people and uh, of the companions and Prophet ﷺ came and uh, he out of love and he out of uh, friendly behavior, he very intimately pinched, pinched me on my, on my back under my arm. And then I immediately said, sort of like complaining, I said that Prophet ﷺ, it has hurt me. And then Prophet ﷺ, out of his humbleness, out of his love and out of his intimacy and how just he was. Prophet ﷺ immediately offered, okay, if I hurt you, you go ahead and you pinch me as well. And then Hazrat Usaid bin Khudair radiallahu ta'ala and who said that I, I told him that you pinched me on my bare back and now you are wearing your shirt. And hearing this, he said the Prophet ﷺ, he readily, he immediately raised his shirt from his back. And then, and then Hazrat Usaid radiallahu ta'ala who said that I got my lifetime chance, my golden chance. And I immediately hugged the Prophet sallallahu his back and I kissed him and I kissed him to all my desires. So these were the companions. They believed in him. They intensely loved him. They respected him, they regarded him from the core of their heart, but this was not all. They obeyed him. They obeyed him, totally surrendering, totally submitting in all manners, in all fields of life, and in all spheres of life, totally accepting the code of life, the mode of ethics taught and brought by the beloved Prophet ﷺ. Verse number 70 Allah says, ذَلِكَ الْفَضْلُ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ عَلِيمًا This is the bounty from Allah and sufficient is Allah as the knower. So this is the bounty that people, the, the biggest blessing and the biggest bounty of the Allah is that people start obeying Allah and their messenger and then they may be awarded and rewarded with the companionship of the prophets, of the Siddiqeen, of the Shuhada, of the Swalikheen in the Jannah. Oh Allah, oh Allah, bless us, bless us with all these bounties. Bless us with the love, with the sincere love, with the true love of 
your messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam with the love of his companions with the love of all those who are the an'amta alayhim with the love of all those whom you're going to whom you going to give the reward of jannah allahumma inni as'aluka Allahumma inni as'aluka al-hubbaka wa hubba man yuhibbuka wa amala allazi yuballighuni hubbaka Verse 71 Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala says ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu khudhu hithrakum fanfiru subatan aw anfiru jami'a o you who have believed take your precautions and either go forth in companies or grow forth all together now in this verse number 71 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is guiding the muslims of an islamic state to take action to protect the state at all levels in all forms either alone as individual capacity or in companies or in groups or in organizations to protect the state or a muslim muslim country now these verses these verses have been revealed in relation to the conditions which were prevailing after the battle of uhud the situations which had developed after the battle of uhud was that there were all sorts of dangers dangers of attacks threats of attacks and then moreover there were even internal treacheries so allah here is ordering the people of madina for the, for the people of that time and even for all people till the day of qiyamah allah is ordering them to be alert ordering them to be careful and to take protections and to protect and to guard the islamic state by all means and all mechanisms as allah says the merit and the order of protecting an islamic state allah says in surah al imran the last verse of surah al imran verse number 200 allah says يا ايها الذين امنوا اصبروا وصابروا ورابطوا واتقوا الله لعلكم تفلحون او ذا بيليفرز دو وات بي بيشنت ادفايس بيبل اوف بيشنس اند دو وات يونايت وذ ايتش اذر اند بروتكت ذا اسلاميك ستيت ذا ستيت ذا باوندريز اوف ذا اسلاميك ستيت اند ذن دو وات فير الله سو ذات يو مي بي سكسسفول So this is the these are the four tips for the people of an Islamic community to be successful to be patient to advise people of patience to connect with one another and to be united and unite and protect the boundaries of and to be watchful of the boundaries of the Islamic state and to fear Allah these are the tips to success what are the merits of guarding what is the excellence of taking action for security of the muslim state and its boundaries hazrat sulaiman radhiyallahu ta'ala and who reports in nisai that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whosoever keeps watch in the way of allah for one day and one night deserves the reward equal to the person who stands throughout the night who stands in in a state of salah throughout the night and who keeps fasting for one month and the person who dies while keeping the watch will be rewarded is like the person above till the last day and he will be provided sustenance forever moreover he will remain safe from two from two torments that is the torment of the grave and the torment of the day of resurrection this is the merit of the person who is guarding the boundaries of an islamic state hazrat abu huraira radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in ibn majah that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says whoever dies while keeping watch in the way of allah the reward of his noble deeds 
will be will continue till the last day his sustenance will continue and he will be kept he will remain safe from the torments of the grave and the torments of the day of resurrection similarly allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised such a lot of reward the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says as ibn hazrat abdullah bin abbas radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in tirmizi that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the fire of the hell will never touch two eyes the fire of the hell will never touch two eyes an eye that wept in the fear of allah and an eye that spent the whole night keeping watch in the way of allah how excellent it is to watch in the way of allah has sahal bin saad radhiyallahu ta'ala and who reports in tirmizi that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has promised and has ordered keeping watch in the way of allah is better than the world and whatever is in it similarly hazrat usman bin affan radhiyallahu ta'ala and who reports in musnad ahmad the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said keeping watch for one night just for one night in the way of allah is better than 1000 nights spent standing in salah and keeping fast for the next day so this is the merit and this is the excellence of keeping watch in the way of allah but i would want to comment here that it is the wars of today the attacks of the anti islamic powers is on the islamic states is today in the days of today is not only on the geographical boundaries the anti islamic powers and the non muslim states are not only going to attack the muslim states on their geographical boundaries only the attack of all anti islamic powers today is on the culture on the cultural norms on the social values on the economy on the educational policies on the educational system on the health policies of the islamic states and the attack which has been launched by all the anti islam powers on the islamic countries on their social on their culture on their economical on their educational on on their health for france is through the media through the literature through the through the social media of today to the internet to the cables and so this is what is needed the teachers the professors of today the economic economists of today the doctors and the health experts of today they all need to be on watch allah make us one of them allah make us understand the importance of all this and may may us be one of those who are watchful of all the attacks which are being made on the islamic societies on the cultures on the economic system of the islamic states and may our sons be one of those who protect may our daughters be one of those who are protecting and playing their roles in the society in the cultures in the family and in the state level also <coughs> then after this in verse number 72 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and indeed there is among you who he lingers behind and if disaster strikes you he says allah has favored me in that i was not present with them verse number 73 allah says but if bounty comes to you from allah he will surely say as if there had never been between you and him an infection oh i wish i had been with them so i could have attained a great attainment verse 74 allah says fal yuqatil fi sabilillah so let those fight in the cause of allah who sell the life of this world for hereafter and he who fights in the cause of Allah and is killed or achieves victory we will bestow upon him a great reward now in this verse number 74 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is again promising ajran azima a 
great reward by the great Allah. How great this reward would be, we just cannot comprehend. Allah Akbar is promising a great reward for the person who lays, da who lays down his life fighting in the cause of Allah. Here in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is encouraging the believers to fight in the cause of Allah, to make jihad. Because this is how the Muslims will be able to protect and guard their state against the enemies or the enemies of Islam. So that is why Allah has promised the person who lays down his life in the cause of Allah as Ajran Azima. This Ajran Azima has been promised to the martyrs of Islam. What is the great reward for martyrdom? Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 1, 54 and Surah Al Imran. Surah Al Imran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in verse number 169, Allah says, And say not to those who are slain in the cause of Allah as dead, they are alive but you perceive not. So this is exactly what Allah is saying that a person who is martyred in the way of Allah, in the path of Islam is not dead, is not dead. He is alive. And how is he alive? Hazrat Masrook radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in Muslim that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, when Prophet ﷺ was asked the meaning of these two verses, the verse 154 of Surah Al-Baqarah and the verse 169 of Surah Al-Imran, then Prophet ﷺ was asked, what is the meaning of these two verses? Then he said that the souls of the martyrs are living. The souls of the martyrs are living in the form of green birds in the paradise. And these green birds, they go about flying around in the gardens of paradise. And when, and when the night sets, they come and they take rest in the beautiful shining chandeliers or lamps which are hanging with the throne of Allah Azza wa Jal. And then Prophet said, then, then Allah attends to them and asks them, have you any wish? And they say, we can walk and we can fly in the paradise. Whatever we wish, what else should we desire? And then Allah asks the same question thrice. And then the souls of these martyrs, they will say, Oh Allah, we wish, we wish that we, we be put in our bodies again to be martyred again in your way. So this is that a martyr does not die. He lives. And what will be the person who, who lays down the life in the path of Allah during jihad? Hazrat Mikdan, Hazrat Mikdan radiallahu ta'ala explains, he narrates in Ibn Majah the Prophet sallallahu said, to Allah there are six excellences of a martyr. The first is the moment the blood flows from his body, Allah pardons all his sins. Exemption from all the sins, the first drop of blood. The first drop of blood of the martyr causes all his sins to be forgiven. What else can we want? What else can you and me be desirous of? The second thing, he witnesses his place in the paradise. So at the time of his being martyred, he is shown, he is shown his palaces in the paradise. The third is he is secured from the torments of the grave. The fourth is he remains safe. He is secured from the torments and the horrors of the day of resurrection. And the fifth is that he will be clad with the garments of Iman and he will be wedded with the virgins of paradise. And the sixth is 
that he will be authorized to intercede for 70 of his relationships of kin on the day of judgment. Oh Allah, make us all, make us all believe, make us all be desirous of these rewards. And then in another words, Hazrat Miqdam radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrates in Tirmizi, the Prophet said, to Allah, the martyr has six excellences. The moment he is martyred, his abode in the paradise is shown to him. All his sins are pardoned. Second, he is kept safe from the torments of the grave. He is kept safe from the torments of the day of the judgment. And he will be given a crown. He will be given a crown to wear. This will be studded with pearls. And the pearls will be more precious than all the worldly wealth and all the worldly riches. And then he will be allowed to intercede for 70 of his near and dear kids. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. Hazrat Abu Huraira and who reports in Bukhari that Prophet said, By Allah, Prophet swears, By Allah, in whose control is my soul, one who got injured in the way of Allah, the person who got injured in the way of Allah will come in the day of judgment in such a condition that blood will be oozing from the wound, that blood will be oozing from the wound and the blood will have the same color of the blood here in the world, but it will be giving out the scent of musk. And then, Hazrat Mughaira radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in Bukhari that Prophet sallallahu has promised that whoever of us is killed in the way of Allah will go to paradise. Will go to paradise. And in paradise, the palaces, Prophet sallallahu has witnessed. He saw with his real eyes and the trustful and the truthful. Prophet sallallahu has reported has a Sumra bin Jundab Raziallahu ta'ala who reports in Bukhari that Prophet said, Today I saw a dream, and the two men came and mounted me on a tree and took me to a very beautiful, huge, glamorous, and splendid palace. I had never seen such a beautiful palace before, and they told me that this was the house of a martyr. How difficult it is going to be! How painful it is going to be. Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala and who said, he reposed in the side that Prophet sallallahu said that at the time of martyrdom, a martyr feels the pain just as if feels the pain of a pricking of an ant. So this is where you are. And then how dear the drop of blood is to Allah and what will be the merits? How Jannah is testified? Hasat Hansa bin Tima'aviyah radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in Abu Dawud, the Prophet sallallahu said, he was asked, who amongst will definitely enter into the paradise? And Prophet sallallahu said, the prophets are sure to enter the paradise. The martyrs are sure to enter the paradise. The newborn will surely be entering the paradise and the girl who was buried alive will also sure to enter into the paradise. And then in Muslim Hazrat Abdullah bin Amr ibn Ulas reports, the Prophet sallallahu said, Allah will pardon all the sins of martyr except death. And what will be the wish of the martyr in the paradise? Hazrat Anas bin Malik radiallahu ta'ala who reports in Bukhari that Prophet sallallahu said, one, one who once will enter the Jannah will never wish to come back to the world even he, if he should be given all the wealth of the world. But a martyr would wish to come back in the world and be martyred ten times for the honor which he was blessed because of his martyrdom. And that is why, that is why Prophet Sallallahu and the companions used to ask for being martyred in the path of Allah. What, what excellence would be that the martyrs will be even be more excellent than the angels of the heaven? <coughs> Hazrat Abdullah bin Amr ibn Ulas reports 
that Prophet ﷺ said that when Allah will summon the paradise on the day of judgment, it will appear. It will appear in the most beautiful form, decorated from in front of Allah. And then Allah will address the paradise and Allah will say, where are my slaves? Where are my slaves who fought in my path and they were killed? Who bore the troubles and miseries and performed jihad in my way? They will be presented in Allah's coat and Allah will ask them to enter paradise. Allah himself will ask the martyrs to enter the paradise. Allahumma ja'alna minkum. So they will enter the Jannah without any account. And the angels will say, Oh Allah, we praised you and we glorified you day and night. Who are these people whom you have preferred to us? Allah will say, these are the people who fought. These are the people who fought in my way, endowed the troubles. And these are the people who laid their lives in my path for jihad. And then the angels will say, Salamun alaykum bima sabaratum fa ni'ma uqbaddar. This is why knowing all this, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, as at the Buhurayra radiallahu ta'ala who reports in Bukhari, that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, if I could do so, I would never remain behind any military expedition. By Allah, in whose control is my soul, I wish to be killed in the way of Allah and then put to life and then killed in the way of Allah and then put to life and then killed in the way of Allah. This was the desire of our beloved Prophet wasallam, knowing the merits and knowing the excellence of a martyr. Remember and pray to Allah these words. Allahumma rzukna shahadatan fi sabilik. Allahumma rzukna shahadatan fi sabilik. Allahumma rzukna shahadatan fi sabilik. And do so with all the sincerity, with all the true feelings from the core of the heart, make this prayer. Because you know, as a Sahal bin Sa'ad radiallahu ta'ala, and who reports in the side that Prophet sallallahu has promised that if a man wished the death of martyrdom from the very core of his heart, Allah should grant him the ranks of a martyr even if he dies on bed. Now let's say that again. Now let's recite that again. Allahumma rzukna shahadatan fi sabilik. Allahumma rzukna shahadatan fi sabilik. Verse 75 وَمَا لَكُمْ لَا تُقَاتِلُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ And what is the matter with you? وَمَا لَكُمْ What is the matter? What is the issue? What is the problem with you, O Muslims? That you fight not? That you fight not in the cause of Allah? For whom? Now this is the second category for whom the Muslims are being ordered to fight. That you fight not in the cause of Allah. For whom? For the oppressed. For the oppressed among men, women and children who say, Oh Allah, take us out of this city of oppressive people and appoint for us from yourself a protector and appoint from from us yourself a helper. Now coming to the commentary of verse number 75, if I repeat and I revise that in the previous verses, Allah has motivated the believers to fight for the cause of Allah, to do jihad so that they may be able to protect and guard the Islamic State and ward off the enemies of Islam. Now in this verse, Allah is talking about and ordering another form of jihad. That is the Muslims, the believers of an Islamic state. They have the shelter of the Islamic state being in a Muslim state. 
they have been ordered to reach out to help the oppressed Muslims of which who are the residents of a non-Muslim state. You understand? Allah is ordering the Muslims residing in an Islamic state to reach out to help the oppressed Muslims who are the residents of the non-Muslim states. The verse Allah in a narrative manner in the form of a question is asking all the believers that what is your issue? What is your problem? What is your problem that that you that you see, you find, you know of, and that you are very much well aware of the people of the Muslims who are oppressed by the non-believing Muslims or the non-believing enemies? Then why don't you go ahead? Then why don't you go ahead and you fight for those enemies, for those Muslims to help them, to support them, to protect them, to release them from the oppressors? There are children, there are women, there are old people who cannot find the resources, who cannot find the conditions to escape from the clutches of the oppressors or who do not have the physical and the economic conditions to be able to migrate out and to save themselves, who do not, who cannot do all this. So why don't you do jihad to help these oppressed Muslims? The orders of this verse is basically in the period of the Prophet Wasallam is the order for the Muslims of Medina. Because these were the Muslims of Mecca after the migration of Prophet Wasallam and the companions. There were some who were left behind in Mecca. They were women, they were children, they were old people, they were men who could not find the resources. So they were left behind in Mecca. And then the tyrants of Mecca, the people of the Quraysh of Mecca, were doing what? They were persecuting them. They were torturing them severely. So Allah here has motivated the immigrants and the residents of Medina, who were enjoying the security of the Islamic State of Medina to help the oppressed of Mecca. But we all know and we all comprehend that the orders of the verses of Quran were not just limited to the period of the life of the Prophet ﷺ. The orders of Quran and the verses of Quran have implications and orders and commandments till the day of Qiyamah. So this verse is ordering all the Muslims of all the Islamic states of the whole world. Even today, even after today, that when the Muslims of the Islamic countries, they are observing that Muslims in the different parts of the world are being tortured by the anti-Islamic forces, by the anti-Islamic powers, then why don't they help them and why don't they fight for their, for their survival and for their protection? Remember, the teachings of Islam and the message of Quran there is no concept of the geographical boundaries of Islamic states. Islam knows no boundaries. Islam is a global religion. And we are all Muslims. And all the Muslims of all the world are our Muslim brothers. All the Muslims of the world are our Muslim brothers. The love of our of our Muslim countries, the love of our Muslim states which should also be just to strengthen our state and to make it as a fort of Islam to support and to strengthen the Ummah all over the world. This verse is actually asking, ordering all the Muslims at, at their individual capacities, at their state levels to help the oppressed Muslims of the world. The verse is in fact ordering the whole of the Muslim Ummah to protect, to protect the honor of the sisters of Kashmir who are being, who are being brutally raped by the wicked Indian armies. To provide help and support and crutches to the handicapped brothers of Afghanistan who are being tortured by the US troops. To provide shelter to the orphans and the widows of Syria 
to help and protect the Mujahideen of the Ikhwanul Muslimun of Egypt, to support, to support, to pray for the JI leaders of Bangladesh being hung, being tried, being punished by the in the tyranny of Hasina Wajid. The worst is asking the whole Ummah, the whole Ummah to help, to support, to console the Palestinian mothers, those, those Palestinian mothers who are now, who are now exhausted, who are just getting exhausted gathering the parts of the bodies of their martyred sons. This verse is an eye opener for the Ummah. It is an eye opener for all the Muslims of the world, for all the Muslim states, for all the heads of the Muslim states, for all the army chiefs of the Muslim states. Allahumma ghfir lana walil mu'minina wal mu'minat wal muslimina wal muslimat Allahumma alif bayna qulubihim wa aslih zata baynihim وانصرهم على عدوك وعدوهم اللهم لعن الكفرة الذين يصدون عن سبيلك ويقذبون رسلك ويقاتلون أولياءك اللهم خالف بين قلمتهم وسلزل أقدامهم وأنزل بهم بأسق الذي لا تردوه عن القوم المجرمين أو الله Help the Muslims of Kashmir. Oh Allah, help the Muslims of Kashmir. Oh merciful, save, save the Muslims of Afghanistan. Allah, take care of the widows and orphans of Syria. Oh our merciful Allah, protect, protect my brothers of the Ikhwanul Muslimun of Egypt. Oh Allah, O oh our Allah, support the J.I. leaders of Bangladesh. O oh Allah, O oh Allah, help. O oh Allah, protect the Mujahideen of Hamas in Palestine. O oh Allah, guide the Ummah. O oh Allah, protect the Ummah. O oh Allah, unite the Ummah. O oh Allah, guide the Ummah. O oh Allah, protect the Ummah. O oh Allah, unite the Ummah. Rabbana taqabul minna inna ka anta sami'ul alim wa tub alayna inna ka anta tawabur rahim. Ameen, summa ameen. Verse 76, Allah says, Allazina amanu yuqatiluna fi sabilillah. وَالَّذِينَ قَفَرُوا يُقَاتِلُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ الطَّاغُوتِ Those who believe fight in the cause of Allah and those who disbelieve fight in the cause of Taghut. So fight against the allies of Shaitan. Indeed, the plot of Shaitan has ever been weak. Verse number 77 Alam tara ila lazina qila lahum qufu aidiyakum wa aqimu salata wa atu zakata? Have you not seen those who were told restrain your hands from fighting and establish prayer and give zakat? But when fighting was ordained for them, at once a party of them feared men as the feared Allah or with even a greater fear. They said, O Lord, why have you decreed upon us fighting? If only you had postponed it for us. If only you had postponed it for us for a short time. Say, the enjoyment of this world is little and the hereafter is better for he who fears Allah. And injustice will not be done to you even as much as a thread inside a date seat. Now here 
Allah is verse number 17. Allah is saying that have you not seen those people who were told Kufu Aidiakum and Akimu Salata? Who were told to restrain their hands from fighting were the Muslims when they were in Mecca. When after the prophethood of Prophet Sallallahu in the 13 years, initially in the period of Mecca, the people of Mecca was, they were asked or they were ordered to restrain their hands, meaning that they were, they were asked not to fight the people of Mecca, the idolaters or the Quraysh of Mecca when they persecuted or tortured or punished them. That is, they were asked not to react or to retaliate in response to the persecutions and the oppressions. And they were in fact suggested was the Ainu bis Sabri was Salah that under these different conditions, difficult situations and state of affairs when you are not allowed and you're not permitted to fight back or to, to retaliate, then what do you do? You seek help. You seek help with patience and with Salah. I shall be talking about this again in Surah Al-Baqarah. But why were they asked to restrain their hands in Mecca was that they were very few in number. They were very few in number. They were in small number. And then they were weak. And they were new converts. And the belief was also not that strong. And then they were actually in the den of the enemy itself. If under those conditions they had reacted, they had reciprocated, they had retaliated to the persecutions, then, then all those tyrants and all those oppressors or persecutors would have just like finished them off. <coughs> so there in the period of Mecca, they were asked to restrain their hands and they were not allowed or permitted to fight. But when the Prophet ﷺ and the companions, they migrated over to Medina and now they were safe in the state of Medina, then one year after migration, that in the first Hijri, they were first allowed or permitted to fight or to do jihad. And then in the second year after migration, that is in the second Hijri, they were actually ordered to fight and to do jihad. Like in words of... Uh, Verse 216 of Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah said, Kutiba alaykum al-kitalu wa huwa kurhul lakum, wa asa an takrahu shayya wa huwa khayrul lakum, wa asa an tuhibbu shayya wa huwa sharrul lakum, wallahu ya'lamu wa antum la ta'lamun. Fighting is now ordained for you. Fighting is now ordained for you. And even if it is disliked by you because there may be things you may dislike and they will be good or better for you and they're going to be things which you like or which you prefer but they may be bad or harmful for you Allah knows and you know not so here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ordaining the people to do jihad but I would also want to uh, throw some light on the other part of the verse which I say, Allah says, they're going to be things which you like, which you want, which you desire. And this is a reality, you know. This is a reality that there are many things. There are many things which Allah orders which Allah orders and which are the commandments of Allah, but the bondsmen, but the bondsmen don't like doing all that. Like it is, it is actually difficult for certain people to, to get up in the morning, early in the morning and to offer salah. And then it is, it is difficult for people to adopt. Certain people don't like adopting the Islamic dress code. There are people who do not like, who find it difficult to cover their faces with the veil. People don't like it. There are people who find it difficult to leave, to leave riba, to leave soothe, to leave usury in their business dealings. 
There, is, there are people who find it difficult to go to the mosque five times a day. But this is what Allah says. They're going to be, they're going to be deeds. They're going to be things which you don't like, which you're going, which you're going to find difficult to do. But they are going to be good for you. They're going to be better for you hereafter and here also. Then there are things which we like. There are things which wants men may be wanting, may be desiring, may be enjoying, but they are going to be harmful for them. They're going to be, they're going to turn out bad for them. Like music, like dancing, like free mixing of women and males, men and women free mixing, like alcohol, like gambling, like adultery, like usury. These all things they seem very profitable, they seem very attractive. But like holding, like like collecting wealth, like showing off, like talking loose, these might seem very, very enjoyable. They may be very desirous to do all these things, but actually the repercussions, the results, they are socially, psychologically, emotionally, economically, every way they are disastrous they are harmful for here and for hereafter oh allah help us understand <coughs> help us understand help us comprehend these concepts and help us be obedient to allah and to his messenger and then in the last part of this verse allah says what i would recite the verse again Tell them that the enjoyment of this world is little. The enjoyment of this world is little. And what? And the hereafter is better for he who fears Allah. This world, the life here, this worldly life, is actually is actually very little as compared to the life hereafter and hereafter is is better for the person who does what who does taqwa inshallah these two things need a little bit of elaboration and i think we are we're running short of time and if i start discussing these two topics the importance of the world or of the life hereafter and the importance of fearing Allah then I shall I think we shall exceed our time limit and I think we shall I, I would want to postpone this to our discussion of tomorrow and then in the end obviously I would like to invite you tomorrow because I will be starting with this last part of verse number 77 of Surah Nisa, where I shall be talking about the importance of the life of hereafter and of the fee importance and the merits of and the excellence of the fear of Allah and Taqwa. Rabbana la tuzih qulubana ba'da is khadaytana wa hablana min ladunka rahma innaka antul wahab. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaqbiruka wa natubu ilayk Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al-mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen Ameen summa ameen I again want to invite all of you and would request all of you to invite all your relatives and your friends and your cousins around you to join our session of tomorrow where I will be talking about the narration of the importance of the life hereafter, the merits of the fear of Allah and then we shall be talking about, we shall be narrating about death and most probably if we have time we shall also be talking about the torments and the narration of the grave inshallah. Tala tomorrow. Fi amanillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.